Welcome back to Medical Mondays, a once a month series that we do that highlights some sort of medical topic that as a physician, I feel that you should know as cruisers. So today is actually two topics, but they both have to do with the skin, the largest organ of the body. And one is cuts. So that means a tiny little paper cut that you could get on the boat from all the paper that you handle. <laughs> <laughs> Checking in out of countries can be a very rough, rough time. And all the way to cutting off your finger by accident or having something lopped off by accident. We're going to cover sort of the full spectrum of that. And then the second big, big part that we're going to cover are burns. So you hung out sunbathing on the deck a little too long and got a little sunburned. Um, all the way to you set yourself on fire with your alcohol stove because you don't know how to use one. So <laughs> I hope I hope that's not something you have to go through. But this is all what Medical Mondays is all about, which is talking about things that we hope will never happen, but when they do and if they do, you know what to do about it. So let's jump right into cuts. As per usual, we are going to jump in with our medical kit. So we will not be talking any objects here that we don't have on our boat and that as a physician, I don't think are important to be onto your medical kit. So jumping into our small cuts and trauma box, the very, very most common, common thing that you're going to have to do is fix a little boo-boo. So you cut yourself on a boat project, it's not a big deal, you just need a Band-Aid. So very simple and simple steps is get yourself some Band-Aids and get yourself some alcohol. And you're going to see a recurring theme in all cuts and laceration, whether it's a small cut on your finger or a large gash you got because you bashed your head into the boom and it sliced uh, your head open. <laughs> First is clean the cut. So if it is bleeding a lot, then of course stop the bleeding, put something on it, but and uh, put some pressure on it. We'll talk about sort of those larger uncontrollably bleeding cuts in a little bit, but for now we're gonna start with small cuts. So you have a smallish cut, it's not profusely bleeding. Um, it may be a long gash that you did, you know, you cut yourself by accident in a really long way, but it is not crazy deep. So the depth of the cut is what's important. It's not how long something might be, but it's how deep something cut. So it's not very deep and all you have to do is clean it up and bandage it. The very, very first step is to clean it and which means cleaning yourself first. So wash your hands with soap and water. Don't wipe alcohol on yourself and think that you're clean. Soap and water. Wash the wound next with soap and water. And that's very, 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 very important. Get in there with nice clean water. You don't have to have it sterile. It would be nice if it was sterile, but you're drinking water out of your tap is fine. Don't use seawater. But wash, 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 clean your wound, make sure there's no debris anywhere in there. And if it's a smallish cut, then you use your band-aids. And if it's a biggish cut, then what do you do? Or if it's slightly deep and you say, hmm, in an ideal world, if I took my partner or myself to the ER, this is where they would give me stitches. Now, this is one of the very first times we're going to break two myths. The first myth is the myth of the Neosporin. And so you have these small cuts and you say, I cleaned it really well, I put a little Neosporin on it and I bandaged it up and it's gonna heal beautifully. You don't need Neosporin. So Neosporin or any antibacterial, anti, I don't know, fungal, most people do antibacterial. These creams are not necessary for wound care and the problem is a lot of them are overused and unnecessary. All you have to do is keep your wound clean and dry, change your bandages regularly, clean it with alcohol. You know, I've got 91% alcohol on board, that's fine. You don't need 99%, whatever you can find, keep a bottle of this. If you want those little pads, that's fine too, but clean, dry, and dress. So you may need to dress the wound very often, but you don't necessarily need preventative alcohol antibiotic cream. So that's the first myth. The second myth that we're going to break is this myth of sutures. Unless you are a surgeon watching this, which in which case, thank you for watching, welcome, and you don't need this part, I think. Um, or you're somebody who knows how to suture and practices it regularly, do not keep a suture 
suit your kit on board. It's not something you're realistically going to use unless you're also carrying all the anesthesia you need to give that specific nerve block under those stressful situations because let me tell you, it is not like in the movies. You do not gulp some whiskey and, you know, have your, you know, wound sutured by somebody. It's just... Don't do it. <laughs> there's a very, very, very easy alternative. So there's three ways to close up a big wound. There's you suture, you staple, you can do steri strips or butterfly clips as somebody called them. They call them butterfly bandages. Um, and the fourth is glue like Dharmabond. So Dharmabond is a big company that makes the glue. The very first two, the staple and the suture, not that great on a boat. It is extremely hard to do them to begin with, and the other person is really traumatized by them. And the other, especially something like staples, you know, I hope you can get 316 staples, skin staples, which may be a little difficult to get. You know, you're also introducing metal into your body, and you just... It's not the most ideal thing in an emergent situation on a boat. What we keep on board here, so I do not have a suture kit, just like I do not carry any Neosporin or antibiotics on board because I do not think that they have a place in most cruising circles or most cruising plans. We'll talk about exceptions at another time. But butterfly clips or steri clips, steri strips are your best friend. So we'll open one up just to take a look and show you what it is. So they, of course, the reason they're called butterfly uh, clips is because they kind of look like a weird butterfly. <laughs> so the idea is you basically open one side. So again, you clean yourself first, then you clean the wound, you dry the wound, you do not blow on the wound. You don't go, oh, don't do that. <laughs> this is okay. If not, just leave it alone, let it dry, um, or pat it with a sterile gauze. You can open one side, you put it on, let's say this is your cut, you put one side on and then you pull the skin taut and you put the other sticker on like this and so the best thing you want to do is line up the skin so if this is your cut you line up the skin as well as you can and you strip multiple strips across so yeah you're gonna have some spaces that are exposed but that's okay because after you put this on you're going to put some sort of non-adhesive pad like gauze on there and you're going to cover it up with some wrapping, like skin tape is okay, um, rolls of ta uh, gauze are also okay, so let me get that from my large cut box, um, and, oh, I see one, okay, so I've got rolls of little tiny rolls of gauze that I use, and that's easy because you can unroll it, check it, change the gauze out for a fresh one every six hours or so, and put this back on. It's just a covering. Um, and that's it. You've now dressed your wound. It is clean. It is ready to heal. And because you've made this really nice and taut, but not overriding, the skin is going to be able to heal quickly and cleanly. The reason that I don't carry glue like Dharmabond is because when you glue this together, you're not letting any air in and believe it or not, you need a little bit of air to heal. You need oxygen to heal. Your, your cells need that oxygen in the wound to heal well. Otherwise, what we call non-aerobic bacteria, which are bacteria that don't like oxygen, um, like to grow in skin wounds when you get cut. So don't. I, I'm not a huge fan of it unless you're absolutely 100% sure you have every piece of debris or dirt out. Um, again, on a boat, in a stressful situation, you're not a practicing physician or a surgeon. It's your best. Seri strips can be your best friend. And they're so tiny. They're so cute. And they're not expensive. They're very easy to get. So just, you know, grab. I've got a whole Ziploc bag of them if and when we never need them, right? Right, right, because we're never gonna get hurt. <laughs> All right, one last thing about cuts and lacerations. What happens if you are bleeding profusely? So uh, the sort of, a little bit more of the extreme cuts, one is that, you know, you cut your scalp open and you could steri strip them, but at that moment, there's a lot of bleeding. And just as a warning, the scalp bleeds a lot. It is a lot of blood vessels there, so, Comparatively, if you cut your, I don't know, you cut here versus if you cut here, the same size, 
this would bleed more, so don't be scared uh, that, you know, the person is going to pass out. Uh, it is just a more, what we say, profused area with blood vessels. Very first thing to do in any case that you feel is a lot of bleeding, which of course involves an amputation, right? So you, you know, get your finger off and you know, it's not funny, but you know, you're going <laughs> um, Very first thing to do is stop the bleeding. So put pressure on it and keep pressure on it until it starts bleeding. Yes, you wanna clean it, but that is not your first instinct. A little bit of blood loss even sometimes can make someone pass out, not because they're in any big danger, which can also happen with a lot of blood loss, but more that the blood loss causes a little bit of a reaction in the body that makes them really woozy and pass out. So cover it, pressure it, I should say. Pressure it by putting something on. You can take something like the gauze that we talked about, um, something thick. If it's something that you feel needs what's something called a tourniquet, you can have, so a tourniquet is any kind of elastic thing that you can tie around someone's hand or finger or, or arm or whatever to stop, the, to basically crush uh, that part of the finger so that it stops the blood flow. Um, I carry a pretty intense tourniquet. This is called the SWAT T tourniquet. Um, it's pretty big. It's you know, honestly meant if you like literally cut your arm, you know, your leg off and you have to stop to stop the bleeding. Um, otherwise, yeah, take anything you have, as long as it's not like a, a dirty, dirty rag, stick it on there, put pressure. If you need, you know, if you, the closest thing you got is duct tape, I've got skin tape, but you know, you take a bunch of gauze, you shove it, you put high pressure, pressure is the most important thing that you stop bleeding with. Um, this is also something really great. Uh, they, it's called a bleed stop. So it's basically a powder that you have, let's say that, you know, cut my finger off and it is bleeding profusely, or I have a really large gash here that's, you know, bleeding quite a bit. Um, you know, pour some alcohol in it, stir, um, uh, rinse it, you know, dry it off a little bit and pour the powder on and it should stop the bleeding. So that's why it's, it, it basically helps you clot a little faster, unless you've got a clotting problem, in which case you should be carrying medication. Um, the body will clot itself. It's not, it's just that sometimes with a big wound, it just needs a little help. And so you can pour this in and then, you know, it, it should start to clot. You put the same pressure, the gauze or whatever it is, you wrap the hand up or, you know, if, you, if it's a big cut here, you pour it in and then you take the gauze and you wrap it up really, really nicely tight. You put some gauze underneath it and now you have controlled the bleeding. You've also controlled yourself. You've controlled the situation, you know, get the boat back in control, get to a place that you both can sit down or you can sit down by yourself and you can treat yourself well after it's you know you've given it a maybe a few hours of clotting time that your body's kind of stabilized you can slowly clean that with some alcohol again liquid you know um having a bottle of liquid alcohol i think is one of the biggest first aids you can have on the boat um i also carry again uh they're called israeli uh bandages they're basically again a really tight tourniquet uh, they're a really good wound dressing as well, you know, in case of a really bad uh, wound, bleeding wound. But those are the things I also, this one I had, this one. So for smaller um, medical kits, if you'd like, so I've got, I've got both. I've got the bleed stop and I've also got quick clot, which is basically a um, clotting pad. So instead of a powder, this is a little bit more controlled. And so you can basically, you take the gauze and you put it into the wound. You basically pack it in and it will also stop the bleeding. So useful things to have for a very, very bad day. Quick little note about amputated fingers or other objects. <laughs> um, I know it's not something that's fun to talk about, but it is important. How do you store it? So teeth, if they fall out and you want to put them back in, you store them in milk. Fingers, so, you know, and you have this guy and you would like to have it back on you. Um, again, rinse it with um, sterile water. So in this case, do take the five minutes. If you don't have sterile water, just boil some water, let it cool back down. Um, and 
uh, soak some like gauze in it and wrap the finger. Keep it moist, keep it from drying out. Um, an infection isn't going to happen in the first like five minutes of it. So if you need to just keep it wet with something, you know, that's not sterile, but then you clean it and you store it in that way and then put it in a Ziploc bag so that you can take it with you. And then you can put that whole Ziploc bag in ice. Do not put direct tissue in ice that will cause the tissue damage that will not allow that to be sewn back on by a professional or a surgeon. So I hope this never happens, but I hope that the little bit of basic information that I was able to give you in a short amount of time is going to help you clean cuts and understand that you don't need fancy equipment. You don't need to know how to sew. Um, you don't need to know how to suture. Don't keep things in your medical kit that in an emergent situation, you are not going to feel comfortable using. Small little quick note about pain. So all of this hurts a lot. So the reason a paper cut hurts more than a slightly deeper cut is because you have more nerve endings um, on your skin's tips. So, um, and then after a certain point, the really deep cuts really hurt when they are healing. So really good for inflammation are reducing inflammation are something like ibuprofen so ibuprofen and in the u.s is called advil it could be called something different um for an adult uh, for a child it's 10 milligrams per kilogram per dose given every six hours for an adult it can be anywhere between like four to like even 800 milligrams it's really really high um it can cause stomach ulcers so always make sure you drink lots and lots of water when you have it and always take it with food you can take it every six hours. It helps with inflammation a lot more, so it's a little bit better to take than something like Tylenol. Don't take aspirin because it's a blood thinner, and right now your body is trying to clot and heal itself, so try not to take something like aspirin. Um, Tylenol is wonderful for... Tylenol, I apologize, is acetaminophen um, by drug name, and it is available in the U.S. as Tylenol. That is great for pain, so take it if you need to if you don't especially if you don't have ibuprofen but ibuprofen is also an anti-inflammatory so that's why it helps with reducing that swelling um of course an ice pack is always helpful so those are sort of your basics of cuts and lacerations remember most of those things don't will not need any sort of antibiotic treatment especially pre-treatment because you don't want to put that on and create super germs on your skin so clean it, clean it, clean it, keep it dry, keep it dry, keep it dry, and change those bandages very often. One of the very few lacerations, so it's actually a puncture wound, um, that you, you know, want to maybe seek antibiotics for sooner than later, are cat bites. So uh, dogs, when they bite you, they rip, they cause tearing injuries. Cats have very sharp, deep, cuts that they make when they bite you really tight and they have bacteria at the end of their teeth. So if you do get a cat bite, I mean with any of these, you do want to seek the nearest doctor, nearest island so you can get to a doctor. But that's something that I think needs an, needs an antibiotic sooner than some of these cuts. I've given you a ton of information and words <laughs> to learn. One quick note while we're talking about the skin are burns. So if you get a skin, uh, like a sunburn that's called your epidermis so it's the top layer of your skin there's not been a cut like there's your skin isn't open um, and you get a bad skin burn or a sorry a sunburn you can basically treat it, where is it? with some aloe keep it cool you will uh, you may bubble don't bur don't burst the bubbles <laughs> I hate to burst your bubble but don't burst the bubbles because the bubbles are sterile at that time just be very gentle with them when you rub aloe or some sort of skin analgesic on it. Um, they sell these smoothing burn, basically burn gel dressings. So you can, if it's, let's say you, you burn all of this, right? Um, you can either slight lightly put aloe over it or take this gauze, this burn gel gauze, and just sort of wrap it gently. It also has a little bit of analgesic to it, so because burns can be very, very painful. For like small burns, I like this, um, it's called water gel burn, water gel burn gel. <laughs> um, basically it's, you know, it's gel. So what you can do is take some gauze, put some gel over that burn, put the gauze on there, and wrap it up. And that's 
basically how you take care of burns. If it's a deeper burn, get thee to a burn unit as fast as possible. Um, in that case, you do want antibiotics pretty early on, but you want a doctor to prescribe them just like anything here. You first treat your first aid on the boat and get yourself to a hospital so that they can treat you. But anything worse than a sunburn, I would, you know, I have a billion burns from cooking and I know that those will be very much on my epidermis. They will never go deeper than my outer skin layer and those very easily treatable on the thing. It's just that it hurts. So that especially the larger the area, the more bubbles can happen. If you burst those bubbles, you are increasing your risk of infection. So then you need to treat, so the, when, the bur the, when the bubble bursts, treat that like an open wound basically. Now clean it all up, take off any loose skin, clean it all up and um, with alcohol and dress that like you would do an open cut or wound. So that's a little bit on burns. Um, I think we've covered quite a bit. I hope that you found this useful. We hope to be back in about a month with another edition of Medical Mondays. And please, as always, give us your feedback in the comments if there's a topic that we have covered that, but not enough or you want an example of it, like building your own medical kit. If you have questions, anything, any positive comments or constructive criticism or questions are always, always welcome. And please put them down in the comment section. See you next month. A big thank you to our Patreons, Madi and Chris and Justin Fagan.